Hi there, my name's Bruce Rain from Brankus Creations, and in this video, I'll be reviewing the InfiRay P2 Pro thermal camera. When you have a YouTube channel, you often get emails from people asking you to try their product. When this happens, I like to try and choose products that look interesting and have some relevance to my channel content and to my viewers. A few weeks ago, I received an email that really piqued my interest. It was for the InfiRay P2 Pro, and it included these promotional images. I must confess that when I first saw it, I thought the claims were a bit outrageous, and this might have been some Kickstarter product that doesn't physically exist. Here was a thermal camera that had a 256 by 192 pixel sensor, a measurement range of minus 20 degrees Celsius to 600 degrees Celsius, and it was small, insanely small. I responded to the email and told them I'd be interested in giving it a try, but to be honest, I felt like there was a catch coming. I still wasn't convinced this thing was real. Well, the other day it arrived in the mail and I can confirm it is real, and I must say it's pretty impressive. So here is the InfiRay P2 Pro, quite a small box. What have we got here? Got oh, a cute little bag to keep it in. And we've got some instructions and we have a warranty and then this is the guy and that is just incredibly small. Uh, that's quite extraordinary. I'll do some comparisons later on showing it to um, my, uh, my Fleur um, product similar to this one. But this is just amazing. I, I can't wait to see how it performs being so small. Wow, and then we have, what have we got here? There's something that looks like, oh, it's a little attach-on lens of some description. So I'd say that's a, either a macro or a wide angle or something like that. So uh, yeah, I'd be very interested to see how that goes as well. So uh, yeah, well, the first, <laughs> First thing that comes to mind is it is just insanely small and it makes some pretty bold claims in terms of what it can do. So I'm very, very interested to give this a try. I use a thermal camera primarily for electronics, for detecting short circuits or defective components that are getting hotter than they should. But there are a whole range of uses for a thermal camera, for checking home insulation, detecting leaks, observing wildlife. You can even use them as a night vision camera because they can detect subtle differences in temperature enough to display shapes in complete darkness. I have two other thermal cameras. The first is a Vivo SC240M, which I reviewed recently. The Vivo is a very different animal as it's an all-in-one with the screen built in in a hard-wearing rugged case. So I won't be using it in comparisons to the P2 Pro. The other thermal camera is a Fleur. Fleur? Fleur? A Fleur 1 Gen 3, and while it might seem a little unfair to compare the P2 Pro to the Fleur 1 Gen 3, as it's since been superseded by the Fleur 1 Pro, I will be taking that into account during this review. The other main player in this range of connective phone thermal cameras is the Seek Compact, and thankfully my good friend Jay has one of these, and he's been good enough to provide some videos from his camera for me to compare to. There's a book by Ben Elton called Stark, and in it he puts forward the premise that miniaturization reaches a point where things get so small we end up losing them and the P2 Pro has got to be getting towards this threshold. It is crazy small. I have the iPhone Lightning Connector version, which weighs 11 grams and is just 31 by 21 by 10 millimeters. If you get the USB-C version for use with Android phones, it's even smaller still, at 9 grams and just 27 by 18 by 10 millimeters. It has an all-metal case and is designed to plug directly into your smartphone. The first thing I noticed, other than how small it was, was the way they built in this spacer under the connector, so that it still plugs into a phone with a protective case on. You can plug it in so that it's facing you or facing away. The P2 Pro draws its power from the phone's battery, similar to the Seek thermal cameras. 
The Fleur 1 cameras have their own battery in the device. I can tell you from experience that I much prefer a device that draws its power from the phone. The number of times I've reached for my Fleur camera only to find that its tiny little battery is flat and I have to charge it before I can use it, even if my phone is fully charged. The specifications for the P2 Pro say it uses 350 milliwatts of power, which is about 25% more than the 280 milliwatt power consumption of the Seek compact range of thermal cameras. I'll do some tests on the P2 Pro's impact on the phone battery life a little later on. When we talk about digital camera resolutions, we often talk about megapixels, but this is not the same with thermal cameras. This Fleur 1 Gen 3 has a thermal sensor of only 80 by 60 pixels, or 0.005 megapixels. For that reason, we'll be using kilopixels to describe the different thermal sensor resolutions. The Fleur 1 Gen 3 is a 4.8 kilopixel sensor, and the newer Fleur 1 Pro has a 160 by 120 pixel sensor, or 19.2 kilopixels. The Seek Compact has a 206 by 100 156 pixel sensor and the Seek Compact Pro is 320 by 240. That's 32.1 kilopixels and 76.8 kilopixels respectively. The P2 Pro has a resolution of 256 by 192 pixels or 49.2 kilopixels. So 10 times the number of pixels as my Fleur 1 Gen 3 and it sits well above the Fleur 1 Pro and in between the Seek Compact and the Seek Compact. Pro. Truth be told, you don't need the same resolution for detecting heat as for visible light, but you still need to be able to make out what you're looking at. The resolution on my Fleur 1 Gen 3 is so low that they added a visible light camera to overlay on the thermal image so that you get a better idea of what you're actually looking at. The Fleur 1 Pro also has a visible image overlay. Like the Seek thermal cameras, the P2 Pro doesn't have an additional visible light camera built in, but I would argue that it's not necessary. The thermal image is clear enough to make out exactly what you're looking at without the need for a visible image overlay. Another really important specification of a thermal camera is the refresh rate or frame rate. This is usually specified in Hertz. Once again, let's look at the comparisons. The Fleur 1 Gen 3, the Fleur 1 Pro and Seek Compact have a refresh rate of 8.7 Hz, or just under 9 frames per second. The Seek Compact Pro has a refresh rate of 15 Hz, but the P2 Pro leaves them all behind with a refresh rate of 25 Hz, or 25 frames per second. In my opinion, that faster refresh rate is one of the biggest selling points. For temperature measurement ranges, all of the Fleur 1 cameras can detect within a range of minus 20 degrees to 120 degrees Celsius. Though the Fleur 1 Pro can also be configured to measure from 0 degrees to 400 degrees Celsius. All of the Seek cameras can detect within a range of minus 40 degrees and 330 degrees Celsius. The Infiray P2 Pro can detect between minus 20 degrees to 600 degrees Celsius. So on paper, the specs of this camera are very impressive, but there is another really important factor here. Because it connects to a phone, there is an accompanying app, and the quality of the app can make or break the usability of the thermal camera. I have always had an issue with the iOS version of the Fleur 1 app. It's always been flaky and buggy and is my next biggest complaint after their battery life. So let's see how the P2 Pro software stacks up. So let's plug the camera in. So it takes about five or six seconds for the camera to initialize and then show the image on the phone's display. The thermal image is displayed in the center with the minimum and maximum temperatures jumping around as well as a temperature measurement for the center of the image. There's a button at the bottom for taking a still image and you can toggle between still images and video here. There's a gallery button at the bottom left for viewing images and videos you've taken. From here, you can share images to your chosen destination. 
There's a palette button at the bottom right which allows you to choose how the different temperatures are represented in colour. By default they are shown as shades of grey, but if you want to get more of an Arnold Schwarzenegger Predator vibe, you can choose the Jungle palette. In the bottom right corner of the image is a circle that pops up an overlay with a few configurable options. The first is to toggle whether the temperature readout shows on the display. There's also an option to rotate the thermal image or flip it if you're pointing it at yourself and using it like a mirror. The variable correction allows you to make changes to improve temperature accuracy with compensation for ambient temperature and emissivity. Emissivity is a setting to compensate for objects that might give an inaccurate temperature reading because they aren't just radiating heat, they might be reflecting heat as well. You can set the emissivity setting numerically with the custom option or choose from one of the presets such as glass, skin and water. Another option is to change the measurement mode from high quality image, wide range or automatic switching. For most purposes, high quality image is the way to go, but if you're measuring a wider range of temperature, you should select wide range or automatic switching. There are also brightness and contrast controls in the image settings. There are a number of settings that can be configured such as temperature units, language, temperature alarm and burn prevention to make sure you don't accidentally destroy the camera by pointing it for prolonged periods at something that could damage it, like the sun. One other nifty feature is the professional thermometry option. When switched on, it brings up an extra set of tools such as placing points on the image to measure the temperature at specific locations, or measuring the minimum, maximum and average across a line or within a specific rectangle. You can also add multiple points, lines and rectangles. There's also a scale button that will allow you to dynamically highlight a specific temperature range in the image. In the top right is a button for manually resetting the aperture. When the camera detects that there has been a significant change in the subject that requires an aperture change, it'll reset automatically, but you can manually force it with this button if you want to. There's also this picture in picture button which will put the phone's visible image camera in a little rectangle that you can move around as needed. There's no overlay option like the FLIR cameras, but it's still a cute feature. One thing I did notice was that if I select a colour palette, then I quit the app, it will go back to the default grayscale when I next launch it. I mentioned to the InfiRay people that it would be good if the software remembered the last selection, and they told me this would be added to the next software release. I was pretty impressed with their response to my feedback. Here is the InfiRay P2 Pro next to the Fleur 1 Gen 3 for size comparison. The newer Fleur 1 Pro and the Fleur 1 Pro LT are approximately the same size as the Gen 3. Here is a side-by-side -side video of the P2 Pro versus the Fleur 1 Gen 3 while I chase my chickens around the backyard. Or maybe they're chasing me. The Gen 3 has the same resolution and refresh rate as the current model Fleur 1 Pro XL. You can see the results are chalk and cheese. The 9 frames per second refresh rate is very noticeable compared to the smooth 25 frames per second of the P2 Pro. And to be honest, if I hadn't told you they were chickens in the image, I doubt you'd be able to figure that out from the low resolution of the FLIR. There was also a very noticeable lag in the FLIR output, but I've compensated for that so that the two images are showing the same content at the same time. Here is the video from the Seek Compact, provided by my friend Jay. It has a higher resolution than the FLIR, but still lower than the P2 Pro and you will also see the graininess and vertical lines in the thermal image. It's a far cry from the output of the P2 Pro.
It's probably worth mentioning that there are actually export restrictions in place on thermal cameras in the US. They restrict US companies from exporting thermal cameras unless they have a frame rate of 9 Hz or less. So US companies like Fleur and Seek must restrict the frame rate of their thermal cameras or they can't legally export them. Thermal camera manufacturers from other countries don't have this restriction. For the battery tests, I don't think it's fair to compare the battery consumption to the phone when it's idle, because it's displaying a live thermal camera image on the screen. Instead, I'll be comparing battery consumption with the phone's internal camera. So I'll charge my phone to 100%, then switch on the internal camera, leave it running for an hour, then check the battery status. I'll then charge the phone back up to 100%, switch on the P2 Pro Thermal Camera, leave it running for an hour, and then compare the battery status. It's not the most scientific test in the world, but it should be able to give us a rough idea of the P2 Pro's impact. I found the battery test results quite surprising, so I ran them a second time to be sure. This iPhone 12 mini is nearly three years old, so obviously results will vary from phone to phone. When I ran the phone's built-in camera for 60 minutes, the battery went from fully charged down to 69%. I charged the phone back up to 100%, then I ran the InfiRay P2 Pro for 60 minutes, and the battery went from 100% to 88%. So it actually consumes significantly less power than the phone's own camera. Now I know it doesn't, but if we were to assume that the battery continued to discharge in a linear fashion, that would give me a total of 3 hours and 15 minutes of use from the internal camera, and 8 hours and 20 minutes from the P2 Pro. As I said before, this isn't the most exhaustive or scientific battery test, but I was very impressed with the low power consumption of the P2 Pro. It certainly beats the 45 minute battery life of the Fleur 1 Pro. Before I give my summary of the InfiRay P2 Pro, I really should discuss one handy addition, and that's this macro lens. The P2 Pro will give you a sharp image from infinity right up to about 15 centimeters from the subject. For most purposes, this is ample, but when using a thermal camera to find unwanted heat in electronics, sometimes you want to get closer than that. This macro lens does that. It's beautifully made and is held onto the front of the P2 Pro with a magnet like this. This will allow you to get really close, about 3 centimeters away from the subject. I work on older, larger electronics, so I'm not sure how much I would use this, but it's a really nice addition and great for people who need to find heat in really small components. The Seek Compact cameras also have the option for a macro lens, but it's nowhere near as neat and slick as this one for the P2 Pro. And it's an aftermarket option, so it doesn't come standard with the camera. Here are a few fun videos shot with the InfiRay P2 Pro. This is a saucepan full of water that is being brought to the boil, and you can see all of those amazing looking convection currents. This is the heating element of my electric blanket. And here is some of the native wildlife at my local shopping mall. This shows where there is a gap in the insulation and the ceiling of my living room. I really must get around to fixing that one day. This is a little wander in a parking lot and the heat of the wheels clearly indicates which of the vehicles have been driven recently. So in summary, I absolutely love the P2 Pro. I wish this had been available before I bought my Fleur 1. The resolution and refresh rate are exceptional. The price is competitive, similar to the Seek Compact, and much cheaper than the Fleur 1 Pro and Seek Compact Pro. For me, it's the clear winner in this market. As far as cons go, I don't really have any, other than being scared of losing it because it's so small. I want to thank InfiRay for sending me this P2 Pro. I received the camera for free, but I have not been paid for my opinions, which are completely open and honest. So what started with a product that I thought didn't exist, turned into what I believe is the clear first choice in the smartphone thermal camera market. Thanks for watching.